to another episode of Varsity Weekly here at the Varsity Sports Show. I'm your host, Noelle Bumel, bringing you this past week's highlights and recaps of all things Arizona sports. So to get us started off, we have a little bit of Arizona State nostalgia. Former linebacker and defensive end Terrell Suggs was recently a part of Arizona State's annual Hall of Fame induction ceremony. Sto Zafiropoulos, Anthony Ramitos, and Jay Wilder had a chance to speak with Suggs and have more from inside the event. Every year, a new group of accomplished former athletes are inducted into the Sun Devil Sports Hall of Fame. Most notably in the 2022 class, former linebacker and defensive end Terrell Suggs. Suggs earned many awards in his time at ASU, including the top collegiate defensive player of the year in 2002. He set an NCAA record for most sacks in a season with 24 and also led the NCAA in tackles for loss with 31 and a half. The local product from Hamilton High School was the first Sun Devil to win a National College Football Award and led ASU in sacks and tackles for loss all three years in Tempe. Thank you for the congratulation. It's, it's overwhelming. It's very flattering, you know what I'm saying? It's, uh, you know, for them to induct me, it's, it's, it's like, you know, I, I, you know, I played so long ago, you know, you, I don't think anybody remembered, but, you know, it's good to still be appreciated for the work that you did, and you know what I mean? And it's a lot going into it. You know, I had pretty much, I had awesome teammates. I had uh, awesome coaching staff. So I'm still, still, you know, taking it all in. I'm very humble, man, very flattered. When you think back to that final season in Tempe, just what jumps out to you first with that, that record setting season? Um, it was really good. Uh, Sean McDonald had a great year that year, too. Not only that, Andrew Walter, he, he, had, he had a coming out party that year and lit some things up. Um, I would say what was a, you know, a big, what was a big moment for us, I'd say when we went up to Austin Stadium and beat Oregon, you know, we were losing the whole game and we came back with a fourth quarter comeback. And um, that was an awesome feeling. And, you know, we had, a, we felt we had a shot at the Rose Bowl, but we, we dropped a few games down the stretch. So, but that team, I think, we could have had a shot at being packed in champion, so, yeah. And Terrell, what is the greatest lesson you learned at ASU that helped impact you in your NFL career? Uh, accountability, I would have to say. Uh, like I said, once I, I got called out in front of the team, I had to be accountable to my, to my uh, teammates and to this program, you know what I mean? And, you know, you, you want to be a man of your word. And, uh, you know, I had to learn that lesson at 20 years old, you know to be accountable to, to your people and handle your responsibility. So it definitely matured me attending Mr. ASU Terrell. and being part of this, you know, football program. Never could have imagined it, you know what I'm saying? It's like uh, the way I feel, like the show must go on, you know, when you get graduating seniors or you have a, a junior that has a good year and he goes into the draft, uh, the show must go on, you know what I mean? And, and since I've left, we've had dominant, you know, uh, players come through ASU, players with similar success, and it's just flattering to see that tradition is keep going. And, you know, to get the call to be like, yo, you get inducted to the Hall of Fame, you'd be like, what? You know what I mean? You get, you get shocked. You know what I mean? Like I said, I'm still taking it all in. I'm having a good time. With it, uh, now that you're here 20 years later, yeah. what impact does the ASU, ASU community have on you? And like still oh, man, I, I just love that every uh, the commitment and the loyalty that everyone still has. You know, through highs and lows, the team, you know, they're still going to support the team. And that's what we need. And, you know, that's how you get back to get to those glory days. You know what I mean? It's the loyal support of the fans and the people. So uh, that's pretty much it. And you talked about other guys coming in these past, since you've been here, and now Coach Ivano is coach. He's focusing a lot on uh, a lot of Arizona guys. Mm -hmm. What would you tell Arizona recruits? In terms of coming to ASU, and well, it all starts with it all starts with an Arizona recruit. You know, what I mean, if you want to build a program, uh, you got to win. You know, the home base and the home kids and the hometown kids got to stay home and commit to making the program better. So that's definitely where it starts. So uh, you know, coach is definitely headed in the right direction that way. And during your time here at ASU, was there anybody that took you under their wing and was kind of your mentor? Oh, I had a few people. I had a few people. Uh, it was definitely Quincy Yancey. Uh, Levi Jones and he you know he took me under his wing by beating me up in practice every day so Levi Jones Tommy Townsend uh, Eric Fields and Adam Archuleta so I, I had a I had a real group of guys a real real uh, 
with tremendous character. So uh, hats off to those guys too. What advice would you give up and coming Arizona State athletes to succeed at the highest level in his or her sport? I would tell them enjoy their time here. You know what I'm saying? Because because it happens so fast. You only get four years. Um, some get more than that, you know, you get five if you red shirt or something like that, but it, it happens in a blur and to enjoy it and to and maximize, you know, your potential here. Whatever you can do, do it. You know what I mean? If it's an extra workout, if it's study hall, whatever you need to do to maximize your time here, I would say do that because it happens so fast. Suggs is just one of seven inductees of this year's class. Alongside swimmer Caitlin Andrew, Retired WNBA guard beyond January, golfer Anna Nordquist, women's track and field athlete Jessica Presley, and wrestler Anthony Robles. Additionally, exceptional coaches and administrators are occasionally inducted to the Hall of Distinction. The 2022 Hall of Distinction inductees are longtime women's basketball coach Charlie Turner Thorne, an assistant football coach, and senior associate athletic director Don Bakke. This was the first induction class since 2019 due to cancellations caused by the COVID-19 pandemic. All inductees were also recognized on the field during halftime of the Washington football game on October 9th. These inductees have now forever left their mark on Sun Devil Athletics. For So Staffordopolis, I'm Anthony Remedios. RC Sports Show. Hey guys, Vince here to talk about Angel Dentistry. It's where my wife and I have gone for over 10 years and we trust them with our routine and extensive dental care because they care. Dr. Amber Angel is an Arizona native born in the town of Miami and has been practicing in the Valley over 20 years. For general to comprehensive dental services, call 602-788-2008. Located off of Cave Creek Road just north of the 101 in North Phoenix. Angel Dentistry, proud supporters of our young people and proud partners of the Varsity Sports Show. Thank you, Stos, Anthony, and Jay for that. Next up, we have our future star reports. Our reporters, Chloe Bolin and Kira Robertson, have more with a post-game interview from the undefeated Marcos Deniza Padres and the Northern Arizona reports. We saw an exciting game from the Padres tonight as they continue their undefeated streak beating Arcadia. So we saw a slow start from both teams tonight, but in the first half there wasn't just one but two touchdowns from you. Can you tell me what was going through your head and why it was important for you to execute? Like the third play of the game and I dropped a wide open like wheel route. I was wide open literally in a touchdown and I got really down on myself and I knew I could beat him with my speed. I've been working on that every day after practice and after I dropped that like it was all on my teammates and my coaches like usually like uh, on most teams, they'll get down on a person for missing a wide open touchdown pass, especially like in the beginning of the game, that kills momentum. But they all lifted me up, and I can't take them more than that because I was really in my own head. And if it wasn't for them, <clears throat> I don't know what I've done. So, yeah, it was really all on them. They changed my mentality. I'm also here with Mason Stromstad, who scored in the fourth quarter, which was a critical drive to secure the win for his team. What was your goal on that drive, and were you confident that you could score? Um, the, the play was actually a drawn up play. Um, a couple plays later, and I trusted Coach Ortiz and his play calling, and it worked out in our favor. We also saw you play well on defense. How did that benefit your offense? Um, I mean, it wasn't just me playing well. Everybody on the team uh, on the defense played well, and us giving the offense good field position and stopping, the, stopping their offense was a big part in why we got 24 points on the board. Next Friday, Marcos plays at home against Combs High School. If you get a chance to come see the Padres play, it'll definitely be worth it. This is Kira Robertson, your Northern Arizona correspondent for Varsity Weekly. This week in Northern Arizona, we had some remarkable performances by the girls and boys Varsity cross country team for Flagstaff High School. Both teams placed first and won the cross country city meet here in Flagstaff. The boys were able to run the meet and finish with a perfect score of 15 points, meeting all of the first five runners that finished the race for Flag High runners. The Flag High Eagles have had amazing seasons under the head coach of Coach Painter. She has been head coach for this team for 20 years and has proven to be a legendary coach. Keep an eye out this season for the results of what this cross country team can do over the next coming weeks and going into state. Chris Scott of Remax is Central Oregon's best realtor for anyone thinking of a vacation home or relocation. He's our very own born and raised Venetian who moved his family to Central Oregon nearly 15 years ago. Contact Chris if you're thinking of exploring beautiful Central Oregon. It truly is living at its best. 541-999-5614. Proud partner of the Varsity Sports Shows, it's Dylan. 
Once again, that was Chloe and Kira with the Future Star Report. Now let's take a break from the field and hit the ice with an overview of this past week's grand opening of the Mullet Arena. Dan Mayer has more from this week's inaugural games for Arizona State's men's and women's hockey teams. This week had some great sporting events, but possibly none bigger than the opening of ASU's new multi-purpose arena in downtown Tempe, Mullet Arena. The festivities kicked off Wednesday night when the women's hockey team took on GCU and the men's hockey team hosted a scrimmage. The ASU women's team came away with a 4-2 victory over GCU and will play again next weekend in Massachusetts against the University of Massachusetts Amherst. The 5,000-seat stadium was sold out, though, Friday night for the ASU men's hockey team's inaugural game at Mullet Arena against Colgate. The electric atmosphere helped the Sun Devils come away with a 2-0 win. For ASU, it has been a different goalie in net so far this season, too. Last year's season starter and now senior Ben Cross has not been ready to go to start these five games. But the sophomore from New Jersey, TG, TJ Septimfelter, has stepped up to the task. He recorded his second shutout of the season Friday night and will look to continue to fight for minutes as the season goes on. With the first two games for the Sun Devils being sellout crowds at Mullet Arena, the hockey team's time at the arena is off to a good start. The hockey crowd and the team will look to continue the momentum into next weekend when they play Colorado College Friday and Saturday night. Founder level sponsors, the Kristen Graziano Group with HomeSmart Elite are proud to be Saguaro alumni, community advocates, and your hometown realtors. The Kristen Graziano Group is ranked in the top 1.5% of real estate teams nationally and your top selling team right here in Sabercat territory. The Kristen Graziano Group can currently be seen on the Emmy nominated TV show Selling the Valley of the Sun. When you're ready to buy, sell, or want to know the value of your home, reach out to the group that knows the neighborhood, the Kristen Graziano Group. Thanks, Dan, and what a great piece of Arizona State history we all witnessed this past week with the arena's grand opening. But despite being out here in the desert, everyone makes sure to pack a jacket or two when attending. Now let's hand it over to Alaya Harriet and Jay Wilder, who had post-game interviews with the Campo Verde and Horizon High School football members who both achieved victory this past week. I'm here with Coach Freeman of Campo Verde. Coach, a big game for Mason Shade tonight on his passing. What did you like from your quarterback tonight? He made quick decisions, got the ball out, saw the mismatches, and, you know, it helps having a 6'3 receiver who can go up and get the ball in Alston. So. And then defensively, you, they only get, um, let up seven points. What did you like from your defense tonight? You know, our defense is just really scrappy. Uh, we're kind of undersized across the board on defense. Uh, Miguel Morones causes a lot of havoc there on the defensive line. And then Gavin Celine at middle linebacker, kind of orchestrates everything. <laughs> and he's a heck of a middle linebacker. And then on the back end, Nate Gomez just keeps everybody in the right spot, made a big interception. He's just the heart and soul of the team. So, Thanks, Coach. Big win tonight. Congrats. Thank you. I'm here with Mason Shea of Campo Verde, our player of the game. Mason? What were you seeing out there tonight at the quarterback position? I just saw a lot of man, and when we saw a man, I trust the receivers to go get the ball and let them make plays. And what is going to be the key to the next game to get the win? Just play with passion and play that we know we can win, for sure, and fight until the end, for sure. And what was the message to the team at halftime? You know, you guys came out really strong in the second half. Um, all gas, don't break at all, just keep on going. All right, thanks, Mason, and congrats on player of the game tonight.
morning, Varsity Sports fans. Huge win for the Horizon Huskies, beating the Millennium Tigers 25-16. to And I'm with Coach Andy Litton. And Coach, I, last nine minutes of the game, you guys are down by nine points. We're looking at the scoreboard. You guys win by nine points. What was going through your mind the last nine minutes of the game? You know, we just wanted to make sure that we kept fluidity on offense. Um, you know, they, they did a great job. They were tough to run on, and we ended up having to air it out again. And, and uh, we've got great skill set. Uh, we isolated Matt a few times, and he made big plays. Uh, and when we didn't end up scoring, we called on uh, on Canyon, and he, he, he balled it for us. So uh, it was, he had a great kick. It was a money kick. And, and uh, you know, we just we, we keep believing. The most important thing for us is to believe, right? And we get stronger and better the more we believe, and I think that this is just one of those stepping stones for us to get better. Yeah, let's add to that. I would describe that as clutch gene, yeah. right? From the special yeah. team, the offense, the defense. Can you just talk about the composure this team was able to go through at the end? Yeah, well, I think that it, it says a lot that they, they, they battled all through last year. Uh, they won a state championship. They have a chip on their shoulder, uh, and they're never out of it, and they know that they can, pl they can play. And so the younger kids are starting to understand that, and the older kids are doing a great job le you know, with leadership, and, and I think it shows the way that we continue to keep battling in games. Lastly, you guys, you talked about a pregame, right? You guys have had a lot of non-section games, one of the most difficult schedules in the state of Arizona. How does it feel to come out toward the end of the season in a way, playing against a plethora of section teams? You know what? It's exciting, but on the other end, we're, we're in the toughest 5A region in, in Arizona. Mm -hmm. uh, so, I mean, we already started with Higley. ALA Queen Creek is one of the best teams in the state. Uh, you know, Casa Grande is as athletic as you'll as you'll see. Mesquite is an is a four x four a champion. Uh, so we've got some some great games ahead of us, and we're excited to keep playing. He is Coach Andy Litton of the Horizon Huskies. I'm Jay Wilder. The Huskies come out of this alive. Yeah. Hi, I'm Jay Wilder. We are here after a big win. The Huskies defeat the Tigers, and I just want to start out with Mulhorn and. Lloyd or Floyd, I'm so sorry. So I thought the special teams was the entire foundation of the game tonight. Even when the offense is a little clunky at times, the defense as well. You guys are making great punts, great snaps, great kicks. You had that critical kick at the end of the game. So how important is special teams today? More important than people think. Like we flip the field, we score points, we do everything. Really important. <laughs> yeah. I love it. That's concise, but also a thousand words as well. And Going forward the rest of the season, you guys had a very tough schedule. You guys have played against really good teams. So going toward, when you're in the margins, right, and it's a very close game, are you guys ready for that? Of course. Yeah, we're always ready. <laughs> and Matthew Kloffenstein, I thought, end of the halves, so you were making big catches, deep plays at the end. So can you just talk about the clutch nature of your game at the end of the halves? Yeah, it was good. So Coach just kind of called on my number, and I just knew I had to come up and make a play towards the end. And so. Um, it was, I knew my name would be called, and so I knew I had to go out there and make a play, and so that's what I did. So. Yeah, when there was like very little margin for error, what was going through your mind for that last catch? That yeah, last catch was just come down with the ball. You know, I beat him off the line. I, I was like, I was like, Z, throw the ball, throw the ball. And then he saw it in the air, and I was like, oh, this is mine. And so I kind of just came down with it, started running, and then, yeah. So. Yeah, yeah, from offense to special teams to defense, the Huskies, they came out in a lot of ways, succeeding, winning a big game against the Tigers. I'm Jay Wilder. Hey guys, it's Noelle Blumel and I'm super excited to be a part of the Varsity Sports Show team. Since being an athlete my whole life and a former collegiate volleyball player, I value the many benefits that sports bring. Whether it's on the court or field, I'm grateful to have this opportunity to tell your stories and further my pursuit in becoming a sideline reporter. You can catch me on Sundays as one of the Varsity Weekly anchors or calling some games as a color analyst this fall. Thanks for tuning in and I'll catch you later on the field. Again, that was Eli Harriet and Jay Wilder. Now let's look at some more high school football victories from Ben Franklin and Corona Del Sol High School and the HJCAC Salt River Scorpions. Ana De La Cruz and Aaron Herpy have more with post-game interviews from each coach. Hey, Varsity Sports Show. This is Aaron Herpy. Corona just won 35-28. I'm here with head coach Jake Barrow. Coach, what did you talk with your team coming out of that halftime? You know, we just went over some adjustments to stop them a little bit better. Defense really stepped up and really had a great second half. I mean, just kind of defense catapulted us to this victory in the second half. So just, just little minor adjustments. And your offense seemed pretty strong coming out of this game. How important was that for your team? It was big. I mean, just no turnover. Well, turnover one, one turnover. But to kind of win that battle and, and still be in this thing, is, it speaks to your offense. Offensive line came out and really did well. 
and your next game against, is against Desert Vista. How, what are you going to work on for this game? Just being more disciplined, right? There were little mistakes there, some penalties, and obviously the one turnover. We're just going to try to clean that stuff up. Thank you, and good game. Thank you. So my name is Ana de la Cruz, and I am alongside Coach Larry Davis after his big win tonight. Coach, what did you see from your team tonight? I mean, everything was pretty much working, whether it was offense, defense, special teams. Well, I'll be honest with you, what I've seen that stood out to me the most is just the will and the fight of Sonoran Sidewinders. I think they came out here, started out slow in the first half, but the coaches did a great job adjusting. They come back in the second half and, and held us to no points in the second half, and they just competed for four quarters. So that's what stood out to me the most. As far as our team, I've seen what I've seen. We've got the ability to make big plays. we got big play capability. But, we, again, things that we need to improve on is, is finishing and execution, staying calm and, and just continue to perform and execute our game when, when momentum's not in our favor. And then what do you think you guys were like kind of able to do to keep them scoreless throughout the game? Uh, I think it's not so much what we did, but I think maybe at times poor execution on their part. But um, I'll be honest with you, I just think um, that at the right times we made some plays. You know, we give up a few big yards, but then, you know, they gave up yards or took losses. Um, and, and so I think we played very well at the back end. More than anything, I think they couldn't – they had a hard time throwing the football on us. We got a pretty – good secondary um, and, and, and so when they got themselves in long distance in third and long they had to put the ball down the field and I, I believe that wasn't in their favor all right thank you so much guys this was coach Larry Davis from coaching our Salt River Scorpions <laughs> thank you so much for joining me and congratulations on the win I appreciate it go Dodgers <laughs> yeah. In 2019, the JV Sports Show podcast began with the idea of spotlighting young people in our community. In time, that podcast evolved into radio, television, and live stream, and through that evolution, new ideas have enhanced delivery, giving a stage to students both in front of and behind the microphone in Arizona and beyond. Thank you for supporting the Varsity Sports Show, now the Varsity Media Foundation, a 501c3 educational organization. What a win for those Scorpions on Saturday night, despite rain delays and a power outage within the first nine seconds of the game. More from Ana De La Cruz is a sneak peek into this year's Arizona State softball team who have a new and unique addition to their already established experienced team. Yannick Acuna, who is an incoming freshman to this year's Arizona State softball squad, is making the transition from high school to college softball far more different than how the average student athlete has it. Yannick's older sister Yanira has been on the team for a while now and is in her last year of eligibility, meaning that Yannick gets to begin her college softball career alongside her older sister. I started playing softball when I was around five years old and that started with like t-ball and it was always kind of like a thing that I was forced to do but not really because my mom was like, oh look, your, little, your older sister's playing softball so she's like, you kind of have to play softball too. So she put me in at a really young age. I always wanted to be a gymnast. <laughs> I know it never happened. And I'm actually a left hand too, like do everything lefty. So I just started taking work, or watching Nita play and everything. So I started throwing right, hitting right, and doing everything the opposite that I was supposed to be doing. So I just feel like I learned a lot from her. And I, just, like, I was kind of pushed to do softball. Yannick Acuña followed her older sister Yanira's footsteps from the beginning, also starting her career down south at Sunnyside Little League. Yanira even had the opportunity to compete in the Little League World Series back in 2013. I started playing softball when I was eight years old. I played a Little League at Sunnyside Little League in Tucson, Arizona. Um, and then I eventually transitioned on a club team. And I ended up with Thundercats from Tucson, Arizona. And then during the summer, I picked up for the athletics and played PGF for them. Siblings playing together on the same team is something that does not happen very often, so getting to watch this duo together on the field will definitely bring a lot of excitement to the games this year. Honestly, it's something I would never like expect. Like I like throw, like if I would put myself back in the shoes, like I would never see the opportunity that I had and honestly it's something I'm super grateful for because I've always talked about how I wanted to play with her and like I'm never going to have this opportunity to play with her but I got the opportunity. 
For Yanisa to come onto the team with Yanira already knowing her way around and knowing how to handle the student-athlete balance, her transition was definitely easier. Well, I mean, not only with softball, but like throughout campus and going to school and knowing where your classes are, I think I've guided her in the right direction of like being able to, um, you know, like time management is really big when you're a student athlete. And so I think I've helped her navigate that really well. Um, just like knowing what her priorities are and I mean, not being really a mom, but you know, knowing what her priorities are. The Acuna sisters grew up with a four-year age gap, so they never really had an opportunity to play on the same team, but now that they're here at Arizona State, they get that opportunity at the D1 level. Since they both do have the same passion and mentality to succeed, they will strive in their careers. What I've seen about Yanita guiding her sister, I think it's a really unique opportunity. She's kind and understanding and has been there before with somebody not leading her along throughout the softball college experience. So I think she's able to provide a lot of insights that other athletes wouldn't be able to provide their teammate just because they are sisters and they have such a unique bond. Yanira has been able to not only help her sister with school and classes, but also serve as an extra coach to Yanisa whenever she needs it. When we're hitting, she tells me what I'm doing wrong and like how to fix it and all this stuff. And then when we're out in the field, she tells me how to fix it too. <laughs> she's just like, she's always guiding me. She never wants me to fail. and She's always pushing me to be the best. Too. For Varsity Sports Show, this is Ana De La Cruz reporting. Thank you for listening to the Varsity Sports Show, where our mission is to empower education and enable dreams, creating an unmatched platform to showcase talent both in front of and behind the microphone in radio, television, podcast, and live streaming. The Varsity Sports Show, still your home for youth, high school, college, and you in Arizona and beyond. A great duo that will be to witness indeed this year on the softball field between the Acuna sisters. To end our show, we're going to head back inside to the basketball court as our own Jacob Carlisle spoke to the Barry Goldwater basketball program about the hopes and challenges for a successful season. And today, my guests are head varsity basketball coach of the Barry Goldwater Bulldogs, Joshua Balony, and his teammates or his players. How are you guys doing today? Doing good. All right, quick questions for you, Coach, first. What is the biggest challenge as a coach? Uh, the biggest challenge for me as a coach is getting the players to believe in themselves, even if they're just starting. Uh, they have to know that I'm there to help them, and sometimes they just can't get out their own heads with that. But as we're progressing, they're seeing that I know what I'm talking about. You guys are going to be just fine. And also, I'm a male coach coaching uh female players uh so i have to i don't want to say limit my wording but be a little softer sometime be a little more compassionate what is one lesson you teach on the court that you want players to take with them when they leave uh our motto so far is strive to be uncommon that we can do anything that we we put our minds to so there's no i can't there is only i can try and i can get better all right other than winning the state title what is the main goal for this season uh, the main goal for this season is just to get better. We have a really young team, uh, and the main goal for me is to let them know that you guys can do it no matter how old you were. Uh, at their age, I was already about to be in college, and so if I can do that at that age, sky's the limit for them, especially with the things that we're doing now and the facility they have here. Thanks, Jacob. And with that, our show this week has come to an end. Thank you all for tuning in and be sure to follow us on Twitter at Varsity Show for all Arizona sports information. Once again, I'm Noelle Blumel and we'll see you next week here on Varsity Weekly.